Thank you very much, uh, Andre and Aaron, for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourselves and uh, Prytech? I'm Andre Yashunsky. Um, founded uh, Prytech 2017. Previous to that, work in a private equity mezzanine, fair investment banking world, manage a few funds. Um, that's it. Now we are uh, uh, with our non co CEOs running uh, Prytech. And I'm Arnon. I've um, been doing investment, investments from, from uh, 97. Um, used to be an investment banker before the, and after that uh, for 13 years in Apex Partners. Um, joined Practic two and a half years ago and I'm based off uh, Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. So my first question is, can you please tell us about uh, Pritex's current strategy in the market and what is Pritex's growth plan in the next five, three to five years? Pritex strategy, we're aiming to build uh, <coughs> long-term assets. Uh, we not say assets in the infrastructures and operation uh, sector. We're basically putting our uh, long-term assets uh, delivering added value of running third side party and outsource but based on deep tech technology which we're developing in our uh, corporate venture arm and also we develop in uh, internally in our uh, operation companies currently we have we active we have two divisions the corporate division and the corporate venture division so the uh, corporate division, it's uh, it's above around 2,500 to 3,000 people divided into uh, four companies today. We, uh, we are in the sector of education, banking, recruiting, and now we're looking at different other sectors. Our concept is very simple. We're coming to to a client, so we're offering them uh, managed services or API or software or, uh, or basically entire key solution of lifting out of entire operation. This is depending on the client and how they are relationship mature with them. But the idea basically to a long-term uh, strategy to become the infrastructure of operation for uh, running uh, uh, b uh, businesses for third side party. We call this term in BOPAS business operating platform as a service. We're heading there right now. We're still building the technologies, the managed services, the trust of the, mar of the market. We have done that with over 20 plus universities, uh, over 30 banks, and uh, slowly, slowly building their reputation in the market. Thank you. Uh, so next question is, uh, would you be able to talk about Prytech and why it is a new investment asset class? I think there are a few things that differentiate us. Um, first of all, compared to other asset classes in the market like VC, private equity, hedge funds, we invest with a very long-term horizon. Um, that means that the whole strategy is different. When we talk meet companies, we, we talk to them about the next 10 years, 20 years, it's a very different way of building companies because you need to build much stronger foundations. You need to, <clears throat> um, the strategy that, that really meet these goals versus short-term strategy that most asset classes focus on because um, their structure forces them to sell companies after four or five years. Um, we are able to do that because uh, we're a corporation, we're not a fund. Um, we're a corporation, and our investors invest in us in the long term. Um, the plan of Prytech is eventually, um, and hopefully next year, to provide liquidity to our investors by going public. And that will allow two things. One is investors who could go in and out whenever they like. Um, they don't feel that they're locked in, like in a fund, for seven years. <clears throat> and that will also allow... Uh, the public to get access to our portfolio and the public usually doesn't have access to private uh, companies and startups. So we think that the, um, that will be an excellent opportunity for people to, to join us. Um, and I think, uh, and, and lastly, um, compared to the other asset classes, we, our strategy 
we are building it based on components. We try to, um, to, to have um, a long-term strategy that is built of service companies and technology companies. Um, we try to st start with a service company and then see which technology technologies we need. By doing that, we graduate and, and with minority stakes in the technologies, turning the service company into um, a smarter asset. Um, that is something that nobody else does. We work in ecosystems, so in each segment we operate, not just us versus the discrete asset we, we hold, but it's a whole ecosystem that works together, and we think that that adds a lot of value add to our portfolio. Absolutely. Thank you, Arnon, for your answer. And my next question is, um, we've heard that Pritech's success in creation of a vertically integrated ecosystem in financial services. Uh, could you please uh, share more about this and uh, its development? Yeah, so like Arnon said previously, so what we do basically, we're creating a value chain, so creating a whole out of the parts. And uh, when we're creating a whole out of the parts, uh, you, we're thinking, okay, what does the end client needs, okay? The end client needs, he needs a technology, but he needs somebody to operate the technology and to provide him an entire solution because his pain points are not in the uh, on open, um, uh, in another piece of software. The pain points right now is in operations in many people who needs to operate because you cannot fire people. Okay, so how do you, what do you do? So the way we're thinking, we, uh, we're thinking upskilling these people, okay? removing them to another positions to create an efficiency on the fact that we're lifting out your entire operation, running it for you, okay? But, and the people, we turning them from central of cost to central of profit. This is our end goal, and this is how we basically be building this. But the idea starting, like I don't said before, but we're taking services and we're empowering it by technologies, okay? We're bringing deep tech and building infrastructure and the technology's purposes to create the process more efficient. So in August 21, uh, Pritech reported that it had closed 180 deals in three years or uh, significantly more than uh, one per week. Uh, this figure includes 20 mergers and the uh, establishment of three new uh, tech companies. Uh, what makes Pritech different from a, a conventional venture capital uh, or private equity fund? Because we know where we're going in terms of strategy, I think uh, reactions in our um, we're very agile. We, we, when we see opportunity, we, <clears throat> um, we move very fast. Um, as opposed to funds, we need to call money every time there's a deal. Usually we're, we're fully funded in advance, so we can react to a deal within a day uh, if, if, if need be. Uh, and, and lastly, because people <laughs> see us as um, strategic investors and not as short-term investors, um, you know, it's very often that, that shareholders in different portfolio companies want to swap shares with us, um, hold shares in Pritech and be part of, of the bigger story. Um, so a lot of our deals are not just cash deals, uh, uh, shares deals where the shareholders give us their shares in the portfolio and we give them shares in Pritech. Um, that creates an alignment of interest uh, because suddenly they see the bigger picture. <clears throat> so I think um, very clear strategy, um, agility, ability to act fast, um, creativity in doing deals, and the fact that we can do deals both in cash and in shares um, allows us to do so um, and, and really grow fast. Uh, the basic concept of funds, okay, why you know, we continue repeating, we're not a fund, right? Funds, gold. To invest a hundred million dollars, turn them into four hundred or five hundred. The goal to make money. Our goal is to build value. Okay, we, to build a vision in which we believe. We don't think about the IRRs. We don't think about it. This is why our play is in 10, 15, 20. We don't we don't have any uh, limit to that. Okay, because we're not trying to create any. Our goal is not money. Money and value being created. Um, it's a something that is coming out of the vision which we're building. It's like, it's an Apple or Amazon. They're building businesses, okay? Big companies building businesses. They don't think how much IRR, how much it's going to be. When the company very mature and it's going to public, it's a different story. But right now we're just building 
uh, and thinking long-term value. Thank you. That's a brilliant addition uh, to Arun's great answer. Uh, so next question is, uh, for much of the time since Prytech was uh, launched in 2017, uh, stock markets have been rising. Um, has Prytech actually sold any businesses in this time? Yeah, so as I just said a second ago, our goal is not to sell assets or buy assets. We're selling, so we're starting, we investing in different uh, companies, technologies, like we have a sandbox, this is the corporate venture arm. And from that, we learn something which just doesn't fit later on to our strategy because strategy is being focused and focused and focused with time. Uh, so we sell these assets. Yes. So we sold the, uh, we did the free M&As and the two exits from a portfolio companies. But for us, it's not a goal. That was just a part of uh, walking uh, forward. Next question is related to the previous one. Um, so Pytech notes that it is able to take a long term view. Um, what are the main sources of its funding and when and where is it proposed to list the company? A source of funding is, is mostly uh, um, family offices um, and that has been the case for the last few years. Um, recently, um, we raised uh, 107 million from an American asset manager, DKP, um, and, and, and that kind of um, reflects the the stage where we are at the uh, beginning, usually corporations uh, get funding from um, private money and then gradually becomes institu institutionalized. Um, next year, we plan to raise money uh, also from the public um, through an IPO or a SPAC, we, the structure will be determined. And by that, we will uh, diversify our investor base. Could you please explain what are the advantages that a diverse group of dozens, if not hundreds, of tech businesses in, uh, focusing mainly of, on uh, financial services, tech, education, cyber, and HR gain from being under uh, the single umbrella of uh, Prytech? So as we said before, it's, uh, we're building an ecosystem, okay? So the technology companies, they need clients. So once they are part of the ecosystem, they get access to our clients. Uh, service companies, okay, they need technologies. So and they don't have the time to focus and develop technologies because they're uh, because they're serving their clients right now. By being an ecosystem, we basically starting creating these layers of exchange or in between the uh, of cooperation between the companies and the potential so synergies and maybe later on M and A's. We we created several we had this several companies which we acquired from our portfolio companies, technological companies, and merge of our service companies later on, uh, creating a, a streamline of a SaaS business inside the managed service uh, company. And uh, so it's a win-win. Uh, service companies getting access to technologies, uh, technologies uh, getting access to the clients, and uh, plus they're getting an access uh, to a long-term player who doesn't think I need to exit in five, seven years or 10 years, okay? We want to build value and we, we're thinking legacy. So this is two math, uh, two free main points, which basically, uh, make us uh, very much different and why people joining under one umbrella. Um, and you have touched on the uh, Bo Pass uh, slightly at the beginning of this interview. Uh, so could you please explain what is uh, uh, what is the business operating platform as a service, which is Bo Pass offering and how it works? So Bo Pass is a concept that being used in other industries. It's now, a, and we haven't heard about the same uh, being used in the education or banking or any service industry. Um, the idea is very uh, is very simple. It's uh, where we coming to a client, and uh, it's actually I will give you an analog to the aviation. Uh, Fifty years ago, uh, in aviation, catering, ticketing, handling was everything inside the aviation company. And then they understood this is not their core business. They don't need to know how to make food. They don't need to know how to move the luggages. They need to know how to fly the planes. And this is exactly what's happening to the banks, right? They need to give loans, but they don't need to do all the back office regulation. If it will be done by outsourced by third side party, for whom it will become essential of profit, but not essential of cost, then the efficiency will go higher. Then we're creating a mutual cost center, which serves many banks, and we're developing the technologies for the banks where they're sitting on our technologies and we operate their operations, compliance, structured products, risk and price. So into that comes a business operating platform 
as a service. So we operate third society business as a service. So we see currently the market starting moving towards that. Okay, we see big tenders, big players uh, attending already. Uh, it's already there. Uh, and we definitely want to be become one of the leading uh, players in that industry. Thank you very much. And, and uh, lastly, uh, what is the, uh, the X factor of Prytec that cannot be uh, replicated by other tech companies? Yeah, I think uh, it, it's the combination of, of things, right? It, it's not one thing. I think we have the fact that we're a corporation and not a fund, the fact that we will be public and provide liquidity, the, um, the strategy that is a bit uh, different because it's long term, the, the fact that um, a lot of our CEOs and entrepreneurs are part of Pritech, the fact that um, we create ecosystems, I think all of them create um, differentiation. I think it creates additional value. It fixes um, some anomalies that were in the market and aligns our interest with investors' interest. Um, and I think um, by that, we, we created really a new asset class that uh, our investors um, uh, really like. Aaron, Andre, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.